Hey guys, welcome to another episode of my series The Greatest Games. And the game I would like to analyze today is the game between Vismantin Anand and Gata Kamsky from the Candidates Tournament in 1994. And I hope most of you don't know this game. I didn't know it for a long time, but actually Magnus Carlsen drew my attention to this game because he did an a AMA on Reddit. AMA stands for Ask Me Anything. And one of the users asked him, what is your favorite game? And Carlsen said, Anand against Kamsky from a Candace tournament. And actually they played a lot of games in this, in this tournament. It was a match pretty much, so I had to figure out myself which game he meant, but I'm 100% sure he, made, he meant this particular game. So I would say we go right ahead and take a look. Anand with the white pieces and Kamsky with black. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, the right lopez, a6, bishop a4. And actually, both players will follow. Um, the theory for a long time. Actually, they're following their own games um, they had earlier. So let's see what happens. Knight f6, castle, bishop e7, rook e1, b5. This is very standard Rai Lopez theory right here. Bishop b3, castle, and now c3, allowing the martial attack and Black is going for it with d5, a very popular opening. Black is sacrificing a pawn for long-term compensation, for long-term compensation or attack sometimes as well. E takes d5, knight takes d5, and here you can see which pawn black is sacrificing, the pawn on e5. Knight takes e5, rook takes. So now the knight is hanging on d5, so c6. And we are still in the middle of this theory um, variation of the martial line. Bishop d6, the rook is attacked, goes back to e1. Now the queen comes into play, queen h4, and you can already see just from what is on the board, the black is having some nice compensation opposites. Now a head in development and his pieces are pointing against the white king, so he's definitely having compensation. g3. Obviously attacking against the threat, queen takes h2, queen h3, and now you can also see the white squares are maybe a little bit weakened, so sometimes white has to watch out a bit, ideas like that, bishop to g4 and f3. So bishop e3, bishop g4, queen d3, and just all works out like that, because now after bishop f3, which is actually, I believe, also a move here, um, White can play queen f1 and defend against the mate on g2. So, Kamps played rook a to e8, also a very natural move to bring the last piece into play. And obviously, there are also sometimes some ideas to either double on the e file or to bring the rook into the attack. So, White is finishing his development as well, knight d2. And, well, I just mentioned it, rook e6. Rook e6, sorry, seems to be a very natural move um, to double on the e-file and to just increase the pressure. But both players were still in their preparation. a4. And this is a very useful move because white, you can see he's kind of passive. Black has a very active position. So with a4, white is opening up the a-file and at least he will have one active piece, the rook, and he can always cause some trouble along the a-file and invading maybe on the seventh rank, and we'll see this later in the game. So black played queen h5. When I was looking at the game, I thought, what about maybe taking this bishop? But again, white is simply defending here, rook h6, and now knight f1, and you might have heard this saying, the knight is the best friend of the king. It's very true here. Knight is defending the pawn on h2, and there's no way for black to break through. So, black played queen h5. 
and now what opens the a file and places knight to e4 first moment this looks a little bris a little bit risky but it was still prepared by um Anand. and they actually still had the exact same position already in the previous game these two players Anand and Kamsky against each other um, so can play bishop c7 but it seems a better move would be actually to play bishop f5 here to pin the knight white has to play bishop d2 and now already some tactics are possible um, and the position is equal so let's have a quick look rook takes rook takes now still the rook is pinned queen g6 and now f3 i think rook a1 can be answered by knight f6 so f3 and now black can actually take on g3 as well i think he has other options but he can even take here and here black black's attack is uh, strong enough to give him a, a put patchel later on queen e3 queen h2 and um, this should end in a draw all right so let's get back to this position bishop c7 now bishop d2 rook f8 e and here in the last game they had Anand played an already decisive mistake actually he played knight c5 so of course he came up with something better now so before we take a look at what he played let's have a quick look how he um, how the other game went after knight c5 there is a problem well it seems first that white is taking a lot of material off the board and he's kind of um, his position becomes safer but now suddenly knight f4 still with only four pieces pretty much um, attacking potential for black black can still create something knight f4 and white is in great danger here and now game continue with h4 and here um, Kamsky missed the win he could have so in the in the other game I should say that maybe one more time this is not the game we're analyzing right now this is the game between the same players and this didn't happen in the game he could have won here with queen takes h4 it's quite a beautiful line I would like to show you real quick queen e4 queen h2 check king f1 now important move queen h3 check so queen g2 is forced otherwise king g1 bishop h2 king h1 bishop f3 and here queen e2 wins another piece on e1 and it's all over so queen g2 and now i thought it was quite nice first bishop e2 to distract the king to deflect the king king g1 and now bishop h2 pretty pretty neat uh, well, because queen takes h2 obviously runs into mate and after king h1 again bishop f3 and it's the same thing we have just seen so black is winning here but in the game they played Kamsi played bishop f3 directly and Anand managed to save himself bishop takes f7 and knight e4 and the game ended in a draw actually was played the same year but not in the same tournament okay let's get back to the game bishop d1 was the move and then prepared quite a strange move but it all works out pretty pretty cool move i gotta say so again what i would like to take off material from the board to easen up his position because after all he's up a pawn so why likes to exchange more and more pieces because I mean in a perfect if it all works out perfectly you reach an opponent game and of course pawn and game with a pawn up would be simply winning so bishop takes d1 and now 
of course rook e takes d1 because rook a takes d1 would simply fail because rook takes e4 and this queen is having an eye on the rook of, on d1 so well this is just a losing here so rook e takes d1 e, rook e takes d1 and now you might ask well the knight on e4 is hanging as well and again a pretty nice variation um, rook takes e4 doesn't work because of queen takes e4 and i mentioned it quite some time ago now you can see how important it was that this a file is opening up because obviously black cannot take on e4 because of back rank mate he can move the bishop and the rook in between but they are both simply taking it black is mated but you might say wait what about queen takes d1 if the rook takes now then i take on e4 and i'm up a piece but white can play king g2 and it's all over because well <laughs> quite a nice position queen takes e8 is a threat rook takes d1 and there's nothing black can do all right so let's get back to the game black played f5 and i say we do the first quick break here and i see you in the next video see you then